I don't know about you guys, but I feel like Crunchyroll is forgetting something. Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace, and today we're going to be talking about the new update for November, Nanaka Headlines, A Magical November. Uh, yeah, I guess. And so guys, maybe I missed the memo on how November is a magical month, similar to how October is a spooky month. I don't know, if I'm missing something, let me know down in the comments, but otherwise, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get into the video. And so as you guys already know, when we go through these, we have a look at the patch notes, but not only that, the implications on us. And there's actually a little bit to talk about, especially from the perspective of clan battle. That always seems to be the freaking case, doesn't it? And so without further ado, let's jump into the content. So first off, we have the Nanaka boosted rates. And guys, do remember that this is a two-star debut banner, and so Nanaka is the two-star, the three-star on rate up is Ilya. And so if you guys have not checked out my previous video in which I rate like the units from Rooker's banner all the way until Muimi's not inclusive, go have a look, but TLDR, you don't want to be rolling for Ilya at this stage of the game. Maybe all those months ago when she was like very, very dominant in PvP. But the fact of the matter is that first of all, she is a permanent character. Second of all, you can get her shards from like the new 17-3 stage hard mode. And lastly, we need to save our jammies for limited characters. And so I do want to end this by saying that Ilya is definitely not trash. She is 100% worth investing into. It's just that at this point in the game, I don't think she's worth investing like your 1150 DAs or like whatever into her getting five stars. Like me personally, my Ilya is still sitting at three stars untouched with no gears on. I've been doing okay in arena without her. And so yeah, to summarize, she's good, but she's not really worth like rolling for, especially at this stage of the game. From here on out, guys, we are going to be living by the philosophy of permanent skip. There are some exceptions to the rule like Kasumi because she's cute, but otherwise ingrain that into your heart and let's move on. All right, and so that's Nanaka. You can definitely throw in like a 10 or two to try pull her. She is a really strong single target mage, very similar to Kyoka and Skiaru. You can check out again my evaluation from the last video. But let's go on and see that there is a new Tower of Luna November. And if you guys have not figured it out by now, we are gonna be getting Tower of Luna every single month. And that every time it comes back, we're gonna be getting new floors. So it's not gonna always be like, oh, you're gonna get 30 new floors, you're going to get 20 new floors. Eventually, I do believe it pulls back to just 10 floors per update per month. But at this stage of the game, we're still getting pretty decent floors. So I think we're getting 20 this time. And then we're also going to be getting the EX floor of for 130. And so not overly much to talk about for this one, except for the fact that we now have Christina. So hopefully Tower of Luna is going to be considerably easier. And so with that, let's move on to Clan Battle. I'm going to save Clan Battle to last because there's always so much to talk about for it. And so let's just quickly go through the rest of the news. So we've got the game update. We've got area 18. So that means new hard mode. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And then for the main story, we've got chapter nine, episode seven to interlude. But what we're really interested in here is this guy over here. We will be going from rank 11, four up to rank 11, five. And then for the hard modes, we've got Ray, Shiori and Saren. Ray and Saren, it's, it's actually pretty big. On top of that, we're going to be getting a level cap increase from 112 up to 115. That's three levels. I think that's actually more than what we've been getting. The last level cap increase was like 110 to 112. And before that, I think it was 107. But either way, if you guys are end game players, this shouldn't matter too much to you guys. But if you are mid game, you're probably going to be suffering from the lack of EXP pots. So remember just to buy out those EXP pots from the daily shops. All right. So aside from that, we're going to be getting new BGMs for the Memorial Jukebox. So if you guys remember, we got that like uh, background music changing a little device thing that was introduced last patch and I think from here on out we're just going to be getting new BGMs every time which is nice however the most interesting thing in all of this is this guy over here where we will be getting memory shards for Tsumuki in the princess arena shop you guys already know about my hatred for Tsumuki she just like she adds so much freaking randomness into the arenas and so what this is going to do is it's going to allow everybody to get five star Tsumukis and so I think there's just going to be more Tsumukis all around either way it's all good I'm kind of happy about it my Tsumuki is still two stars, I get to have another five star unit. And if you guys have not figured it out by now, I am a massive collector and completionist. I love seeing five star units. And that is what led to me bricking my Halloween Misaki. Anyway, moving on, next we've got the Guild House third floor. Okay, I'm pretty interested to see 
what exactly was on the third floor. Because I remember reading through the story and it's like the third floor is haunted or something. And so that would be nice. I feel like our real estate has been has been a little bit limiting as of recent. But otherwise, accompanying the third floor release, we're also going to be getting a new furniture set. Not much to say about this one. It's kind of Hansel and Gretel vibes, if you know what I'm saying. I'm a witch. I'm going to throw your children into the oven and eat them kind of vibes. My whole house is made out of gingerbread kind of thing, you know? But alas, I am just wasting your time and let's move on. We've got the normal quest drops times two. Nothing to be said except, oh my god, thank god, I am struggling so hard. I don't know about you guys, but half of my units are still at rank nine. I'm like, jeez, I don't know how I can keep up with this. And so for this one, we're going to take note of the date. So this is going to be the 13th of November until the 18th of November. And the reason that this is important because we need to see if it comes before or during CB. And so to finish things off, we are going to have a hard quest drops times two. It, this is getting more and more important every day. All right. And so that summarizes the updates. So let's have a look at this one. 13th of November, 18th of November. So 13 November, 13 November. And so as you can see, it looks like the November clan battle is going to start on 11th, 17th. So that's the 17th of November. So what this means is that we're going to have about like four days worth of two times normal drops to prepare for this clan battle. And so with that, welcome to the November clan battle and all of the different intricacies and situations that we have been placed in. So in this clan battle, we're going to be facing, uh, uh, I don't know which astrological sign that is, but I think Crunchyroll needs to, <laughs> needs to rethink this. Anyway, from this clan battle, we will be getting the Suzume shards, but that's not really what I want to talk about today. The real kicker about all of this is that I don't see a mention of unique equipment anywhere anywhere at all right so yeah unique equipment over here but no unique equipment over here and that may start being a problem right as you guys remember in cb last time we did have our phase three bosses coming in during i believe like lap six onwards and so mfs like this they got like massive defense increases they got they got really hard to kill on top of that, they started hurting us back as well. And so I don't know about you guys, but I was left in a corner crying. It's at this point in the game where I believe pretty much every server has unlocked their unique equipment or had the feature implemented. And the reason that this is significant is because we get the Hiyori, we got the Ray, and we get the Saren UEs. And obviously the most important one is the Ray UE because it gives us another 60 defense down for physical teams. That certainly helps with the lap three bosses. So if I just come over here, you guys are gonna see Clamp. Battle 10, we are no longer having Wyvern anymore. Rest in peace, my boy. But to be honest, sleep well because we have been beating your ass for like freaking 10 months now. Anyway, so we are going to be getting this troll looking guy, but not only that, I want, to, I want to show you guys something quite significant. And that is pay attention to these lap numbers over here. One to three for phase one. Phase two will then begin at lap four and last until lap 10. And then phase three will be lap 11 to infinity. And so I do want to compare this to CB9 because you'll realize that it is a little bit different. So bam, CB9. And as you can see, lap one, lap two to five, and lap six to infinity. What I just showed you is that phases two and three are being pushed back. And so hopefully what that means is that like some of the not as strong clans, they will be having an easier time with, or hopefully they'll be making through a lot more laps. And so just quickly, as you can see, lap one uh, to lap five should be pretty standard, pretty easy. And then if I switch over to clan battle 10, it should be lap one to lap 10. So I, I hope you guys will not struggle too hard all the way up to lap 10. And so it's from lap 11 onwards that it gets a little bit dank and a little bit harder. However, this time, I think it's a little bit better. Like we've got the... I still don't know what the heck that is. But this bad boy, uh, his name is Argeti. Argeti has 280 defense and 250 M defense on phase three. If I come back to clan battle nine, you're going to see, look at this guy, 370 defense. And then on this guy, 320 and 380. And just looking at all of the defenses, like it's a freaking nightmare, especially for physical teams. However, old mate Argeti has a little bit of nerf stats. And I don't know if this is going to persist. But yeah, hopefully the absence of unique equipment won't be too bad especially if the stats are looking like that right but yeah that's probably one of the biggest impacts for us 
we still do not have Ray UE. However, on the flip side of it, we do have the Christina, which provides a massive amount of damage as well as physical defense down. And so not all is lost. Hopefully we'll still be doing pretty well, especially with Christina on our side. And so with that, I think that's a pretty conclusive look as to like the clan battle changes that are coming for CB10. But before we wrap it up, I do want to show you guys this image over here. And it's all of the CB updates that are coming as we get through each CB. And so as you can see, last CB was CB9 and we got the stage three or what I've been referring to as phase three from lap six onwards. And so today here we are stage two, we are going to be getting from lap four, which is what we saw. And it's only from lap 11 onwards that we're going to be getting the phase three bosses. And so hopefully you guys did notice this bad boy down here, which is pretty interesting. There is absolutely no mention of these mechanics over here, but I'm just praying big pray that this will be happening. But essentially there is going to be a removal of the fifth boss in rage. So fifth boss, when it gets to about like 50% HP, it goes into a different move set as well as like sometimes increased stats. And so hopefully that's one less timeline to worry about and you guys can have a more chill experience. But guys, the reason I'm showing you this is because after the 10th CB update, so the one that we're getting right now, it's going to be five patches until we get the next update in which all bosses get accuracy plus 30 and we get multi-target bosses. And so guys, you may be looking at this like, why would I want the bosses to have more accuracy. I don't know if you guys have experienced like the Kokoro dodges or like the Kari dodges, but by giving these bosses accuracy, it stabilizes your timelines. For example, you might have trialed like three or four times and you had pretty consistent runs on a particular boss, but then you go into the real thing, the clash, and then the boss misses your freaking Kokoro. And so therefore, if your Kokoro has dodged, then the Kokoro doesn't have a UB because she didn't take damage, right? And then all kinds of interesting and very frustrating situations come from that. Anyway, the point of this is that like after the 15th CB, there's going to be a lot of changes from there, almost every single CB. But for now, we can rejoice in the removal of the fifth boss in Rage, as well as the pushing back of the phase three bosses. Okay, so let me come back over here. This is the JP unique equipment timeline. This actually just speaks for itself. It has been 290 days since global launch. And equivalently, the days after JP launch is in this column over here. So what this means is that this batch of unique equipments, they got it 284 days into their launch. And considering we are at 290 days, six days after they got their UEs, and we don't even have a single announcement anywhere to be seen, I think it's safe to say that our UEs are late. And so depending on your perspective, this could be a good thing or a bad thing. If you guys have not been farming like the hard shards for these ones, for example, the Saren, the Ray, the Yui, the Kokoro, the Pekarin, then you guys have more of a grace period. Hopefully you guys will be able to get at least the 50 shards. And so I think it's logical to assume that if the first batch is being pushed back, the other ones probably will be too. Because the cadence of these UEs is typically about 30 days in between each batch. And there's no reason to assume that they're not going to hold to that though to be honest I think we're already like way off schedule so maybe they'll speed it up I don't know but guys in a nutshell if you haven't been farming start farming and if you have been farming good work keep farming I'll probably come out with another unique equipment video very soon so stay tuned all right but aside from that I think we've covered everything that we can possibly cover today and so to wrap things up first of all I want to ask you guys why is my website in Espanol <laughs> like guys I do not speak a lick of Spanish I have no idea what any of this says oh I I do recognize Mob Psycho 100 in Reagan. Okay, you know what? Maybe I do speak some Spanish. Anyway, I'm gonna stop screwing around and I wanna ask you guys, how do you guys feel about all of these updates? It's starting to get a little bit dank. It's starting to get to the point where we really can't copy stuff anymore from other servers. Do you guys think it's getting spicier? It means like, you know, clans have to work harder for their spots. Do you guys reckon that our delays in unique equipment is good because we get more time for farming? Or are you guys kind of sick of getting our asses whooped because we are getting content that's not really designed for us? As for my opinion on all this, honestly, I'm just chilling. But this question is not about me, it's about you guys. And so if you would be so kind to leave your thoughts down in the comments below, I would really appreciate it. Because it means that you've watched up until the end of the video and so thank you guys so much. But otherwise, please consider liking this video, it really does help the channel out. And if you would like to support the channel, we do have some affiliate links as well as a membership thing down below but otherwise as nanako once said all good things must come to an end and so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye